A lot of websites today are full JavaScript SPAs that use XHR to request data from the backend server and update the front end dynamically. This means that the traditional methods of scraping via requesting and pulling down the HTML will fail. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the methods I use to get around this, plus it will work well with standard static sites too. Now, this is going to involve using an automated browser. This is generally slower and a little bit more difficult to scale, but for a lot of applications, I think it still works well. I'm much more of an advocate of actually trying to find and reverse engineer the backend API to get the data that way, but it isn't always as easy. Quite often it can be difficult to find and often it is obfuscated. This video is sponsored by IP Royal. IP Royal are the proxy provider that I'm using for my high quality residential IPs for web scraping purposes. They have been using them for a while and they've been absolutely fantastic. I've been getting great results. The ones that I recommend you check out are the Royal Residential Proxies. These ones are the 100% genuine residential IPs from across the globe and it's hands down the best way to go for web scraping. They do have data center proxies too if you wanted to use those. Good throughput, good stuff, but I recommend the Royal Residential ones. You can set them up to auto-rotate by themselves. They're super easy to put into your code existing or new projects. You can choose certain countries. You can choose to select to just hang on to a specific IP in a dashboard if you wanted to. And also they are fully concurrent as well, which means you can go absolutely nuts with async if you want to. So if you want to check them out, Check out the link in the description below and also use my code JWR50 for 50% off your first Royal Residential Proxy order. So use that link, use my code, all that cool stuff. Let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the automated browser to load up the page we want data from, then pass it back to our HTML parser. You can extract information using the browser itself, but to save time I often use the extra package to make it life easier. So I'm using play right here. So this is the sync version. There is an async version available and I'm using Selectolax as the parser. This is my favorite HTML parser at the moment. It's uh, super quick and lightweight CSS selectors only, which I think is really useful. So the first function we are going to use solely to focus on passing the data that we get back. So you can see I'm creating it with the HTML page, which is what I'm going to the, the variable I'm going to be using to actually store the HTML data in. I'm then creating the, uh, the the sort of the soup, if you like, the HTML that I've called it there. And we're looking through the selectors of the actual page to grab the information that we want. I've noticed that most of the uh, actual blocks of the info on the page are under this div, which is the class of caption. So we're gonna utilize that. We're gonna then loop through it and then grab out each of the bits of information that we want. So in this case, it's just gonna be the name and the uh, price. So we're going to create a dictionary to grab that information in and fill it with the CSS selectors using CSS first to get the first one that it finds. The other one, which is just .css, which is what I used earlier, just always returns a list. So I noticed that the actual full name of the product was in an attribute. So we can easily just do .attributes and then ask for that title attribute, which you can just about see in the bottom hand corner, bottom right hand corner, where you can see it says title that gives us the full information. After we use .text on the price uh, element, we're just going to append it all to this list that we've created. Um, there's going to be better ways for you to get this information out. This was just for me to make it nice and easy to demonstrate. We're going to return that results list. So that's basically the parsing part. Now that would be standard regardless of whatever you're doing, how you're getting your HTML. So let's move on to actually using Playwright to control our browser to actually then uh, load this page up, which we can see on the right hand side of the screen, and then click through all of those extra pagination buttons to get all of the data. So we need to grab the URL and set that up. And I'm going to be using a context manager for Playwright, which is in the documentation. This just means that the browser always gets closed when it's finished. If, if you're interested in the double Z is to center the line you're on in NeoVim to the middle, which is such a useful shortcut unless of course you're in insert mode. So we're gonna launch the browser in headless mode is false. You can do headless is true as well, that will work. I'm just doing it false so we can actually see it working uh, again for the demonstration. So we need a page with our browser.new page and then we wanna tell that page to go to the URL that we have set up. There are quite a few different weight options available to you when you use 
um, playwright. I like network idle, which basically means if it's been a certain amount of time since there's been no network traffic, uh, it will actually just use that wait. You can also use wait for a certain selector to appear uh, and other ones too. Uh, this is just the one that I'm going to use in this case. So to deal with the next pages, there is a next page button. I'm going to set that up using the next page uh, as the locator. This is going to mean that when I want to break out of the while loop, which I'm going to use next to keep clicking on that next button, you'll see that where we can use it as is disabled. This is a pretty neat trick when you have a pagination that works like this. I'm just going to print out the data so we can see it coming through. Uh, no point in um, trying to do anything with it at the moment. This is all just um, test data anyway. And the, um, uh, the page, the HTML data is in page.content. Uh, you can do anything with this. You could also save it to your uh, computer if you like. You can save it to your, to your file system. Um, I do that sometimes, uh, less so when I'm doing things like this. So this is where we get our if next page is disabled. Uh, this will mean that if it finds this uh, locator that is uh, disabled in the HTML CSS, then it will be able to identify that and we're going to use that to break out of our loop. Then we're going to actually click on the next page link uh, because if you don't check for this, it will keep clicking on the dot next even though it's disabled and you'll never break out. Then I'm going to use the wait for load state, uh, which is basically the same as the um, wait until that we had in the page.go to, but here it's wait for load state. Again, network idle just to make sure that it's finished. Handy shortcut for if name is equal to main there, and we're going to finish off our code like this. Quick check through to make sure I haven't missed anything, save it, and then try to format it with black uh, just to make it all neat and tidy. Done, super. Such a handy thing to have. So we can see all of the data flashing by and when we get to the end it closes because of that uh, next page is disabled and uh, that's it for this one. So now you get the idea we're going to move on and I'm going to show you a similar example using Python's web scraping framework Scrapey. The basics are going to be the same although this is going to be a little bit more complicated to set up but it's going to be worth it in the end for the extra features we get and the error handling it gives. Okay, so moving on to the Scrapey version that we're going to do. Obviously, we need to pip install everything. Uh, ACT for me is just to activate the environment. I have that set up uh, on my uh, terminal. So I have Scrapey installed. We're going to do start project as we would do almost always and then create the basic spider as it suggests here. Most of this setup is going to be the same. There's a few specific playwright lines that we need to add into the config before we get going. I'm just grabbing the URL for the site that we're going to be working with. This is an infinite scroll website. Well, rather it scrolls mostly down to the bottom. But what that means is we can use some of the cool uh, playwright tricks to actually get it to scroll down for us within Scrapey so we can then access all of the data as it goes through. So I'm going to go straight to the settings.py file because we need to add in some extra lines. I'm also going to set this to false just for now, uh, just because, uh, yeah, why not? So on the Scrapey Playwright GitHub page, it has the things that we need to add in. I'm going to put in the download handlers. This basically means that it's going to use Playwright uh, when we tell it to to actually make the requests and I'm going to grab this one as well although I'm not entirely sure if I actually need it because we're not using any async here this is all going to be a synchronous uh, program so let's go to our spider file which should be called scrollmore.py there we go and let's start uh, adding in the the stuff that we need to actually make this request scroll down the page with playwright so I'm going to start by using the um, scrapey start request function uh, there are other ways you can do this. All you need to really get to the point is that when you create that actual scrapey request, you add in the playwright specific information uh, as I'm going to do just in a minute. So we're going to do scrapey request and then I'm going to add in the URL which we want to do, which I'm just going to grab from the other page, copy that out and set the callback to the pass function. This isn't strictly necessary because the pass function will always be the default callback anyway. It's in case you had it called something else. So this is our specific Scrapey playwright information. So I'm doing meta dict. Now you can actually just write a dictionary if you want to. I just did it this way. We need playwright is equal to true. This means that this is going to be a playwright request. I'm doing include page here. 
I don't think we actually needed this in the end because we weren't working with any of the page after the request. Uh, so I'm not sure whether that was needed, but these bits definitely are the playwright page methods. So this is what's gonna happen on the page when it immediately loads up before it is passed off to our pass uh, function. So you can't use this to like do something and then come back to it. You would need to do it a different way. Uh, but this will all happen before the information gets sent to our pass function. So we needed to import page method from Scrapey, Scrapey Play right there. And the first thing I'm going to do is wait for selector. This is a good one to use to check that the page has loaded up some information. And if we come to the inspect element here, you'll see that there is the standard selector for just one of the, the products. I'm going to use that. So nothing will happen now until this selector or a element that matches it is found on this page. The next method is a good one we're going to use, which is evaluate. I've spelt it wrong there, but I will change that. Don't worry. Um, this basically lets us execute JavaScript code on this page. So if you go through to your inspect element and you go to the network tab, um, rather the um, I forget which one it is now. One of the ones will actually let you execute JavaScript. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'm copying this across. Don't worry, I'll put this somewhere for you to find. I don't know JavaScript that, that well, so I just copied it from the internet. There we go. And that's basically going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page until it will scroll no more. Now you can execute any kind of JavaScript with this evaluate, which is pretty cool and pretty handy if you are uh, if you know what you want to, to do and you know how to do it in JavaScript. I'm going to use wait for load state again here on network idle. This one has worked well for me, so I'm going to continue to use it. Uh, moving on to the pass function, this is going to be pretty straightforward because basically all we're doing is we've given it a load of HTML. So go ahead and just do your normal scrapey thing here. It was, the whole magic was in the uh, the scrapey request, which we were doing the scrolling with and using the browser to actually render that page for us. As I said before, this generally does slow it down a bit, but it's not too bad. It makes it more difficult to scale though, because it means that you have to have the processing power, maybe in your cloud computing or whatever, to open up and run a load of browsers. And you then have to manage them and make sure that you don't have loads of massive memory leaks because browsers are huge memory hogs, as we know by running Chrome. Uh, I'm gonna fiddle with these selectors a little bit to start with. I don't think I need to do that one. I'm gonna go back and check. It's actually a div, I think. I think I saw it there. Um, just to make sure that we get just the basic information. I just want to, shoot, to see and show you that it scrolls all the way down to the bottom of the page. Let's save and format with black again to tidy it all up. Thank you. Looks good. Super. So let's give this a go. So I'm going to run scrapey crawl and we should see the browser pop up in just a second and then go through everything. And it didn't because it popped up on my other screen. So I'm going to run it again for you just so you guys can see it. I saw it there flash by, then I saw that the last item was correct. As I'm going to scroll up and double check here. Uh, yes, this uh, enamel repel pin is actually the last item. So I know it's working. Let's run it one more time so you can see the browser come up and you'll see it scroll all the way down. It does seem to take a couple of seconds to launch the browser. And you can see it scroll all the way to the bottom page. There, there we go. So it's not too slow. It's not too bad. It's just a bit memory heavy. Uh, and you know, not the, my preferred method, but it does work pretty well when you need it to.